Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking at part two of how Excel Draw works, and this is all around how we move elements. So let's dive right into it. So if you haven't seen part one, uh, I'd recommend having a quick look at that, or you can find the code in the GitHub link. I'll leave that in the description, and we'll pick up exactly where we left off last time, where we can draw lines and we can draw rectangles, uh, and that's about it. So yeah, let's let's go into this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another radio button and we're just going to call this one uh, selection cool and yeah at this point i'm going to rename this element type it's no longer really an element type now that we've got selection it's basically a set of uh, tools so i'm going to rename this to set tool as well so you'd have a selection tool line tool rectangle tool that's fine makes a bit more sense um I'm going to scroll up and have a look at the mouse down that we set last time. So the previous app basically assumed that we're always drawing if we click on something. Same when we're moving. And now that's different. If we're in the selection, we don't want to, we're not necessarily drawing. We could be moving something, which is what we're going to have soon. And in the future, we might be resizing or, or if you're not clicked on anything, you shouldn't be doing nothing, right? So um, I'm going to update this to reflect that. First of all, I'm going to do, um, so if the tool is equal to selection then we're going to do something else right um so let's right now we just know we're going to be moving um else otherwise yeah otherwise we're going to be drawing cool and yeah and actually so set drawing obviously also no longer makes sense right because we don't want to have another state for moving so what we can do is we can just change this to kind of a bit more of a generic name which might not be the best i'm going to call it set action and i'm name this to action um, and I'm going to default to the action as none right so by default when you click down there is no action we're not doing anything uh, if we're selecting so if we're selecting something we're going to be moving actually if so if we are um, selecting uh, on an item or an element so if we're not an element we're going to be uh, set moving or set action to moving all right I'll, I'll do that for now otherwise we're drawing so let's do drawing and i think i can just take that down here so let's do set action when we mouse up we set it to null to none and while we're moving we only want so that's going to be a bit different so while we're moving we're only going to do this bit of code if we're drawing which we had before right so i'm going to say if action is equal to drawing then we're going to do exactly what we had before right nothing else has changed otherwise uh, do nothing so we still got the line still got the rectangle but if we do the selection then we're not doing anything cool i think that all works fine um perfect i think actually this set action makes maybe a bit more sense at the bottom here as opposed to the top so create that cool so now we're going to focus a bit on the actual selection right so what do we want to happen so when we select an item we want to make sure we want to check if we're on the element right so let's let's basically add a function for that so const element and i'm going to store that element so that we can use it later on when we're moving around so count element um, is or actually get element at position um position x y and element. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the client x and y which is basically our mouse position uh, we're going to pass them in and let's also pass in all the elements. Cool. And we can now just uh, create that function. I'll create it here. Call this x. Call this y. Should be fine. And let's implement this one. So basically, we're going to go through all the elements, and each element is just going to check: is the mouse position within my boundaries, or is it, you know, rectangles within a rectangle, or is it within the line? If so, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's just going to keep going, right? Um, so what we can do here is we can just return elements.find. And we take each element. And then we can just say here, we're going to have to create another function. Um, uh, let's just say is within element. And that's what I'm going to call it. Is within element. And we'll just pass in the element. So it's going to go through each one. And it's going to check if the x and y position is within the element if it is it's going to return true so let's uh, create that function that's fine uh, let's convert that to a 
function. Perfect. And now, now what we need to do is we need to do slightly different logic based off of the element type, right? But we don't have access to the element type right now. If we do a rectangle, right, make this a bit bigger, the state doesn't capture the element type, right? So what I can do is up here where we create the element, we already pass in the type from, from last time. Um, so we can determine what element to draw. So I'm just going to add that to the element that we return. So now when we draw a rectangle, hopefully in the state, we can see that the type is a rectangle. And now we can we can basically use that. So I'm going to bring that back down. Um, so it's going to be if, well, we're going to actually destructure type um, equals elements. And then if, yeah, if type is equal to uh, rectangle, we're going to check if it's rectangle. Otherwise, it's a, it's a line, right? Cool. So at this point, we need to do a bit of math to figure out if the coordinates are within the um, selected elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste a bit of code in, um, as opposed to kind of have you watching me and figure this all out. Um, I think this should be fine. There you go. So I'll walk through what I've, what I've basically uh, added in here. Um, so for a rectangle, I basically we're getting the minimum x and the maximum x, and we're checking if the mouse position is in between those two. Uh, and same for y, right? So that should be kind of simple enough. If the mouse is in between x, these two x's, and these two y's, then we're in the square. So that should be kind of um, simple enough. For the line, I had to do a bit of Googling um, to try to remember my high school maths and um, kind of finding line equations and stuff. But I found a nice answer on stock overflow, which I'll link below, which explains it quite well. Um, but the general concept is, and I think I've got a little diagram to show this, is if we have a line which is A to B, you know, this line, and we want to check if point C is on that line, we can just see if the distance between A and C, which in this case is 3, and the distance between B and C is 7, if they are equal to the total distance from A to B, then it's on the line, right? If this, if we drag this down, so the point is off, and this then, you know, goes down, this is getting a bit bigger, right? So now it's actually gone up to, I don't know, maybe four. And this has gone down, this has gone up to, you know, eight. So it's no longer equal. So that's basically what I'm doing here, right? So that could be shown as a distance of A to B is equal to distance of A to C plus B to C. Um, and then when I did that originally, I figured out that actually when you click, um, it's, it's almost impossible to kind of get the exact point. So we don't want an exact equality, right? We want a bit of um, a bit of offset, right? So what I've done is I've just rearranged that formula to say, take the full length 10 minus seven minus three. So we should, um, we should basically that should equal zero, but we're, I'm given a bit of offset. So I'm saying actually, if it's, if it's less than one, then you're probably trying to click the line. So we can just, um, we can assume you're moving. Um, and that's what this code does here. So we've got points A, B, C. Um, I've added this distance method um, that I've again taken from online. And then um, I'm just checking that it's the offset, which could be one or minus one. It could also be negative is less than one, right? So that's why I'm doing that absolute here. Cool, so I think that, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, let's move on. So now we've got within element, we've got to get the element at position and we can just set the action now. So I'm going to set the action to moving. Um, we'll do an if statement here. So actually, we only want to set the action to moving if we if you are if the element exists, right? Otherwise, yeah, we're not doing anything. So we can have a quick check if this is all working fine. So if I draw a rectangle and a line, selection tool. So if I click down and move, click it should stay none here and selection. But as soon as I hover over um, a rectangle, if I click within that, it's going to change to moving. That's fine. Let go none, and the same with the line moving, let go none, perfect. So at this point, we essentially want to, um, we want to move the rectangle, right? So we'd go to hand, handle mouse move. Um, the problem now we have is we don't have any way to, to know which element we've selected, right? So we need to store that element. So let's do that here. So I'm going to call this selected, uh, selected element. Um, I'm just going to pass in the element here. Cool. And Let's create a state here, uh, selected element, oops, and we're just going to initialize that to null, I guess. So when we're selecting, um, it's going to set that element, and 
when we um, on mouse up we're gonna reset that to to null perfect so back to the handle mouse move um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an else if action here so else if action so if we're moving then we need to get the details from the selected element and update the the, uh, the element. Now we've hit into an, kind of another issue here, which is previously we were just assuming that it's always the last element, right? So we're just taking an index, and that way we we could update it. But now we still don't know which element to update, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an ID to the um, to the element, and for now I'm just going to keep that ID as the index that it's in, right? So that way we can just um, retrieve it. So that way we don't need to change our code. But, um, our previous code but we could just add this bit of uh, new functionality so anyway we do create element I'm gonna say hey the ID here so when we handle mouse down ID is going to be um, elements dot length so that's gonna be the next um, the next ID for the element which is um, fine and then here for the existing one we're just gonna pass in the index so we already have all that all that code there and now we can get the ID from here, and we can do essentially this this update here. Um, and because we're going to do pretty much the same update, I'm just going to copy this and create a method quickly. That way we can just reuse this. I'm going to create a method called update element, and it will have the exact same code. This will be ID x1 y1 x2 y2, and this is the type. Cool. So we're just going to take all that in. And replace the index here. So now we can just do a slight refactor here. So we can remove all this and just make a call to up the element here. Perfect. And we're going to do something similar here. So we've got the ID here, um, and we're actually going to need access to pretty much everything uh, in the selected element, um, including the the type, right? So when we're updating, previously we were just updating the x2 and y2 because the starting position is always the same, but now we want to do the opposite. So now we want to move x1 and y1, so we want to move that around, but we want to keep the same width and height, right? So let's just do this. So we know the ID is going to go there. We know that this is going to be something to do with the mouse uh, position. So we'll do client x, client y. And here we actually, we're going to take the client x, wherever the mouse is, and we're going to add on the width and the height of the, of the previous element. Uh, of the existing element. So we do want to keep that. Um, so I'm just going to do plus width and plus height. Cool. So client X and Y, uh, I'm just going to move that up there so we've got access. And we're going to create uh, width just as we've done previously in the create element function just by doing x2 minus x1. And height is going to be y2 minus y1. Cool. So that should give us. Um, some functionality and we're going to give that a test and we're going to see there's one little thing that we've um, kind of missed out on. So as soon as I select an item and I start moving, you're going to see that it jumps a bit. Same with the line, right? So we've got the move functionality, but you may have noticed when we're moving the X1 and Y1, we're setting it to the mouse position, which is fine if I'm you know clicking up here. Um, but if I click down here, as soon as I start moving, it's going to say, hey, I should move the X1 and Y1 to the mouse position. So it kind of jumps. So if you want to fix that, we just basically need to record uh, an offset. So if it's, if X1 and Y1 is 0, 0, and I've clicked on 5, 5, we just need to keep track of, hey, we're actually, from X1 and Y1, we need to add 5 to the X, add 5 to the Y, and that's where the mouse position is. So we just need to do a bit of maths to, to keep that. Um, to keep track of that. So I'm going to do that in the handle mouse down. Um, so we can get the offset x just by taking the client x um, take away as in the mouse position take away x1 and we can do the same for uh, for y right there we go and then what we can do is in this case I'm just going to add on to the selected element right so I'm just going to kind of have a bit of a convenient place to to add it so there we go offset and offset y and now down here instead of client x and client y we're just going to do client x take away the offset right so 
I'm going to call this new x1 is going to be equal to client x minus um, what was it offset x and y, which I can add um, here. So offset x, and then we can do the exact same for y. So new uh, y1, perfect. And now, wherever we've got client x, we can just replace with new x and replace client y with new y. And that should be should be it. So we're going to draw a rectangle, draw a line, take the selection. Here we go. Uh, and that's I mean that's it for the functionality. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to add one final thing just to improve the UX a bit, which is as we hover over, we're going to change the cursor, and that's just to make it a bit easier to to see. And we've already got all you know everything we need to do that. So if we are um, using the selection tool, if we're using the selection tool, we can just change the cursor if um, the mouse is on top of number, and we already have the function to do that, right? So we can just say event dot target dot um, I think it's, it's style dot cursor. We can just do uh, get element at position client x client y um, elements. If that exists, um, then we're just going to do move. Otherwise, we're going to do default. And that should be that should be it. So I'm going to try this now. Final bit, which is rectangle line. Now selection. As I hover over, it's going to go to the move, so you can move that and go off. Perfect. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for this video. Um, I'll be doing another one on resizing soon, so keep an eye out for that. And thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.